thank you for being here. When I was thinking about an idea worth spreading, I was thinking about thought leaders of the past who had gave very simple messages that affected millions of people. And I thought about Conrad Hilton, the founder of the Hilton Hotels, uh, great-grandfather of Paris Hilton, and he was on the Johnny Carson show, Late Night with Johnny Carson, and for those that don't remember Johnny Carson or don't know him, he was preceded by Jay Leno, then Conan O'Brien, and today J Jimmy Fallon. They had a great conversation. At the end of the conversation, Johnny looked at Conrad and said, Conrad, do you have anything to say to the American people? Conrad straightened up his shirt, looked at the camera, and he said, ladies and gentlemen, the shower curtain goes inside the tub. <laughs> so you might say, hey, Mitchell, you said that to make us laugh. Maybe that's a little bit true. But what was interesting is he gave a message of service. The service was to the American people. Let's not have any accidents. The message to his support staff was, let's ha not have any messy cleanups. So as we transition from the industrial age to the social age, I want to give a message. I want to give a framework that will help you avoid accidents and messy cleanups. So from a framework perspective, that aha moment is when the light bulb goes off. It's when you actually say, aha, I look at the world in a different way than I've looked at it before. And so here's an opportunity that I'd like to have you participate in this presentation. When you see this aha, I'd like you to say, aha, now you guys have done really well, but if you don't mind on three, let's try it again. I'm gonna to count to three and I'd like to every, everyone to say aha. One, two, three. Aha. Man, that was great, thank you. So you saw the presentation being seen and being heard as a thought leader, and you wondered why the B, capital B, capital E. Well, as we move to the social age, everyone has a microphone. Everyone has an opportunity to speak, and in order to be seen and heard, you have to be liked and trusted. And so thinking about you and how you do business today, think about what you do. You do business with those that you know, like, and trust. When was the last time you went to a restaurant you didn't know or went to a town and needed to stay in a hotel? Didn't you actually read the reviews to see whether or not you would know, like, and trust them? Now, the other is, the corollary is also true. If you run a business, your prospects, your customers want to do business with those that they know, like, and trust. And so trust is a very interesting thing. You earn trust by demonstrating these three virtues. Vulnerability, saying you don't know what you don't know or saying when you're wrong. Integrity, say who you are and be who you say and authenticity really demonstrate who you are. When I was nine, my parents got divorced. At 18, my mom got remarried. And although she did a great job of raising me, I never had a male role model, I never had a male mentor. And in putting this presentation together, what I realized is my first male mentor was a real negative mentor. It was my first boss when I graduated B-School. He had a strong command and control presence. He had some hedonistic tendencies. And although I only stayed with him for a year, he stayed with me for 13. How that manifested itself in the corporate world was that when somebody would ask me a question, I was not authentic. I did not give my answer. I always gave the answer that I thought my boss wanted to hear. So, in the dot-com days, I went on my own. I started a management consulting firm. I was helping companies figure out how to use this thing called the internet to streamline operations and to save and to make money. And I had my first CEO tell me his strategy, show me his website, take a look at what's going on. And you know, I didn't like it. And so the first time in my professional career, I was gonna be vulnerable and I was gonna be authentic. I think I got carried away because I said, when he said to me, Mitchell, what do you think? I said, I think it sucks. And then I didn't physically do this, but I'm sure I went like this and backed up waiting to be fired. And he leaned in and he whispered to me, Mitchell, no one has ever talked to me like that. Tell me more. And I realized the importance of being vulnerable and living with integrity and authenticity. And I'd like to say that to you, if you live with vulnerability, integrity, and authenticity, you have a much better chance of being trusted. And if you're trusted, you have a much better chance of success because your prospecting customers do business with those that they know, like, and trust. You guys ready? Uh -huh. All right. So as a thought leader, 80% of the content you share should be somebody else's. 
Now, after I was done with this presentation, I started binging TED. You know, TED Talks are really cool. And I will guarantee you, if you schedule a calendar appointment to watch one to four TED Talks a week, you will be a much better person for it. And so I have five of these aha messages I want to share. Four of them are from other thought leaders. This one's from Steve Jobs. Your time is limited, so don't waste it leading somebody else's life. So you need to be you. Live who you need to be and start living that today. So let's assume you now care about yourself and you're actually being you. You also now need to care about those that you're listening to, those that you're with. And so what's important here is to figure out how to listen, how to show and be someone who cares. And I'm talking about listening not just here, but with your eyes, with your nose, with your mouth, with your heart, with your presence, with your intuition. What do you really think is happening? Many times when I'm trying to sell somebody a product or service, and the prospect is, is giving me a hard time or getting objections, instead of kind of trying to shoehorn them into the product, I'm going to listen. And there are many products that we have today that came out of those objections, and I often wonder, what would have happened at Tower Records or Blockbuster Video or Borders Books if the management team actually listened to and saw the market changes and did something different? So somebody who did listen and listened well, I saw the movie Founder, where Michael Keaton plays Ray Kroc. And it was amazing to see who he was at 50 years old. He was a traveling milkshake salesman. He had a hard time showing one milkshake machine. A restaurant bought eight. And he said, I got to see what this is. Now, in the movie, he drove cross country. In real life, he actually got on a plane, flew to Orange County, visited the McDonald's, and he was amazed. The rest is history. But if you watch the movie or read about Ray, what he actually did through listening, through perception, he actually built the franchise organization that it is today and the real estate empire. So here's what I'd like to suggest for you. For the next 24 hours, and if you're up for it, for the rest of your lives, really pay attention to the person you're interacting with. Really listen to who they are and what they do you'll have a much better chance of being successful because what happens when you listen and you care about somebody else, you have a good chance of being liked. And if you're liked, you have a much better chance of success because, by the way, you guys can read along with me, your prospects and clients do business with those that they know, like, and trust. Next time, please echo that out loud. I'd love to see that. Aha. Uh -huh. So this one's from Simon Sinek. If you don't know what you do or why you do it, how can you ever expect someone to buy from you? If you actually haven't listened to yourself, if you actually haven't listened to your clients, how can you actually talk about what you want to do and have people buy from you? So what I want to cover here is how to actually go about thought leadership. How do you get known? What are the important elements? So I'm going to share this in two pieces. I'm going to talk about social media, then I'm going to give you a definition of thought leadership. So, social media is two words, right? Many people treat it as one. Hopefully I left the right finger up. They treat it as media. They have a microphone. They talk in the microphone and they say, are you ready? Hey, look at me, look at my product. Buy, buy, buy from me. And their potential audience, run, run, run. Social media is two words. Social plus media. 80% of the weight of those two words should go on social. Now, I'm on radio probably three or four times a week. I'm often asked the question, how do you do social media in five minutes a day? Do you guys want to know how to do social media in five minutes a day? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Participation is good, encouraged. So here's what I suggest. You wake up in the morning, and you share one, two, or three pieces of content. You take one minute on whatever platform your clients and and customers are hanging out on, then go away. Come back two hours later or in the afternoon and interact with the people who have touched your content. Here's what's interesting. Let's, let's take this to a physical world. Let's say you're actually working for a company where you actually go into the office. You're sitting at your desk. Somebody brings you coffee, they bring you paperwork, they come in and they say hello. What are you going to do? You're going to say thank you, thank you, and hello back. You're not going to ignore them. So how come on social media, when people like your stuff, favorite your stuff, share your stuff, love your stuff, do you ignore them? 
What's important now is we not just have a microphone that we're talking to, we have a headset, and there's two-way communication. And that gives me the opportunity to talk about what thought leadership was and what it is today. In the past, our thought leaders were brought to us by the recording companies, the broadcast media, by the publishers. We were told who we were going to listen to, what actor we'd see on a small screen and a large one, and who we were going to read. And when those thought leaders said jump, their flock said how high. Well, that's not how it works today. We have the microphone, but we actually have a listening piece as well, and we interact both directions. And what's often interesting are the people who have been able to build a large following by interacting and being able to show themselves and interact with their community. So here's my definition of thought leadership. For the marketers in the organization, this is the, uh, this is the two by two audience by content. If you have no content and no audience, you're unknown. If you have very narrow content, but a very large audience, you're an evangelist. Companies have used evangelists in the past, and the problem is their content is so narrow, they're not perceived as being authentic. If you're not authentic, you're not trusted, it doesn't work as well. If you have a large amount of content, but a very small audience, you're an expert. Now, here's the important part. To be the thought leader or the recognized expert, you have to have the right content for the right audience. That means if your customer base is a country, or a region, or a city, you don't need to be talking outside those regions. Same thing functionally. You need to focus on just the right customer set and the right content. And what I'd say to you, if you actually do focus on that and you focus on the right content for the right audience, you have a much better chance of being known. If you're known, you have a much better chance of success because, okay, you guys could read along, your prospects and clients do business with those they know, like, and trust. Thank you. Aha! A Brene Brown did a great talk on vulnerability, and this one is, in order to have connection, we have to be seen, really seen. That means you've got to know you, you've got to know your client, you need to be able to share back and forth effectively. In this last area, I want to talk about success, and I'm going to do it, we as humans, we are really social animals, we are social creatures. And so what I'm going to do is talk about collaboration in the ages through, uh, through this success. So what I'm going to do, it's interesting to think about uh, what's happened over time. If you're IT, it's interesting to see both centralized computing, then decentralized computing, and then centralized computing again. In this particular space, when we were in the agricultural age, we actually maximized our life through collaboration. If your family actually grew corn and your family grew potatoes and actually your family did livestock. Your three families would get together and barter and be able to have a much better life. What happened when we hit the industrial age is that completely changed. We no longer maximized our overall lives, we maximized somebody else's life. What we did is we identified and optimized every process. We managed by bullying. There was a strong command and control process. And the catchphrase of the day, never let them see you sweat, i.e. never be vulnerable. Now, in the social age, we have an opportunity to go back to maximizing our lives through collaboration. We have an opportunity to live where we want, do what we want, when we want to do it. That's going to happen when we collaborate, not just human to human, but human to computer. So I want to give you an example. Uh, we all are using some online calendar tool. I have about 10 meetings a day. I have friends who have 20 to 30 meetings a day. And I'm sure each and every one of you have played calendar ping pong. That's when you say, I can meet on Monday at 3 or Tuesday at 4. They come back and say, no, I could meet Wednesday morning. Well, we estimate it takes about four minutes to play calendar ping pong. So imagine the guy who has 30 meetings a day spending two hours setting up those 30, me those 30 meetings. That's crazy. So there's an app for everything. So not only do we have an app for our calendar, we have an app where we could actually send the calendar URL to somebody, they could book the time. Now for those consultants in the audience and online, those consultants, they may charge for their time. Well, there's another app we could use to actually take the money without any human intervention. And then in some cases, those consultants, those customers come to them from the marketing efforts they do, and sometimes they come from affiliate partners. Well, there are apps you could use where the affiliate partner is paid immediately when the consultant is paid. 
So if we do a good job of using the tools effectively to streamline our lives, we actually can create an environment where we really can do what we want, when we want, when we want to do it. And when we do that, we're going to come up with a different four-letter word for the word work. Can you guys guess what that word is? It's a good word. It's play. And if work equals play, we play all the time. If we play all the time, then we are a lot more fun. And if we're a lot more fun, we have a much better chance for success. You guys ready? This is your part. Because your prospects and clients do business with those that are fun, and they know, like, and trust. Uh -huh. Oh, let's see that one more time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Awesome, thank you. So this was from Tony Robbins. When do people really start to live? When they face death. So you have three reactions to this. One, you could say, uh, this doesn't make sense. Two, you could wake up tomorrow and think, I'm going to die the next day and live your life like you're going to die the next day. But that doesn't sound, I don't like the consequences of that. Three, you could wake up tomorrow and wake up tomorrow and live as if you're living the person you need to be. So as we cross the chasm from the industrial age to the social age, I want to be able to give one last quote. I want you to be able to live a much more satisfying personal and business life and to avoid some of those accidents and messy cleanups. So let me read this quote first and then we could all repeat it second. You can maximize your collaborative life by sharing the right content with the right audience with care and trust. How about we do this together? You can maximize your collaborative life by sharing the right content with the right audience with care and trust. I'll give you all a aha. I see you. I hear you. I feel you.